Hey, this is Sean Decker with Dread Central, and we're here at the TCL Theater in the heart of Hollywood, California, for the 21st annual Screamfest Film Festival. With me is Paige Ruth, actress from the feature film Father of Flies, which enjoys its LA premiere on October 14th. Before we dive in, let's take a look at the film's trailer. Huh. Nobody's there. I'm glad you're hanging around for a few days. That's okay. Mommy! Maybe it's time to discuss making me more of a permanent fixture here. Where's mommy? I'm allowed to see my children. You need to see a professional. I don't even know anything about her. Um, she wants me out. That much I'm sure of. Well, in that case, we better get you home before the evil witch puts a hex on your room. Father of Flies and looking at the trailer, I have not seen the film as of yet. Um, the trailer has just this really lurking creep factor to it, which I, I really like. There's a subtlety to it, but it seems absolutely terrifying. Uh, what was your experience shooting this film? Um, generally, most people have a great time on horror films, as it turns out, and not a great time on comedies. But they, oh. yeah, they <laughs> seem to really enjoy shooting horror. Uh, how is your working uh, relationship with the director? With Ben, yeah. it was great. He He's very much the director. He's like an actor's director, I guess I would call it. Like, they roll, you do a few takes, and it's kind of done. Like, there's not a lot of direction. He's not micromanaging your, um, your ideas, which is really nice and freeing as an actor. So, just very easygoing guy. What was your preparation for the role? I really just tried to harness my your, teenage angst. Your angst. Your yeah. Angst. Yeah. yeah, I just took myself back to childhood or teenagehood and um, just really channeled myself at like 15. Have so. you been a lifelong horror fan? Yeah, I was yeah. actually really into the Saw movies when I was a teenager and uh, Rob Zombie, like House of a Thousand Corpses, all of his films I, I loved when I was like 13, 14. So lots of gore and lots of overt visuals. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're a fan, I would take it of then Rob Zombie's Halloween and Halloween 2? Yes, okay. yes. But more so House of a Thousand Corpses and The Devil's Rejects. Those were my, my favorites as a teenager. With Father of Flies, where did you shoot the film? We shot in upstate New York, in Suffern. Was that during the pandemic? No, we actually shot in 2018. Oh, really? Yeah, so close to four years ago at this point. Which made production quite a bit easier than it is now. Yes, yes, we did have some trials and tribulations, but um, it's all worked out now, which is great. Going back to that production, what was your uh, favorite memory of principal photography? I think, I mean, all of it was so fun, but um, there's a scene of me running through a forest, and it, 
it was fun, but it was also very painful. It was probably like minus four degrees and it was raining like the slushy ice. But at the same, I, there was actually one time um, we, we did a take and there was this frozen lake near where we were shooting and I completely fell and almost fell into the lake. But it's just that adrenaline and I don't know, the, it was so beautiful, all the scenery, it just, it made for a really fun night. What month was this shot in? January. Oh, in upstate New York. In upstate New York. Not challenging at all. No, no, no. Warm, balmy. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm on an island, I'm on an island, it'll be fine. <laughs> well, I mean, you've cut your teeth now, certainly within the horror world. That's, that's kind of something that every young final girl or actress in a horror film generally has to do. Something uncomfortable. Yes. Something covered in sticky blood running through the forest at night. Not so, not so much blood, but a lot of ice and um, a mini skirt. So, oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's also part of one, of one of the hallmarks. Yes, exactly. So you kind of join the ranks of uh, Sally Hardesty and a lot of the other greats, Texas Chainsaw Massacre reference. So aside from running through a freezing upstate New York in January in a miniskirt through ice, uh, what else comes to mind in regards to the production and the location? So the house itself was a little bit creepy. I personally didn't notice it. I don't think ghosts like me very much, but the rest of the cast and crew were very spooked out by the house. And then not only the house we shot in, but the house that all of um, like our director, costume producer stayed in, they actually had a priest come and bless the house because such weird things kept happening. Of note, what were they saying? Glowing orbs, moving furniture? I think maybe, yeah, things being misplaced and then doors opening or toilets flushing by themselves. Like, you know, classic ghost activities. I think sometimes that's why a lot of these films either take place in New England or inspired by New England. Because I, I swear to God, every time I go to New England, if you just type in like nearby haunted places, if you're into seeing those types of things, yeah. it's like there's eight within a square mile, wherever you are. It's right? everything is so old and creepy and growing up from Cali or growing up in California, everything is knocked down and we rebuild it all the time. Right. I mean, there's some spooky stuff here too, but it's like even just the gates are old, like everything's from like the 1600s out there. So I think there's a lot of history and a lot of ghosts. I do love the East Coast. <laughs> Me too. Absolutely. Me too. So the uh, film is enjoying its LA premiere here on the 14th. Yes. Are you excited? Yes, I'm so excited. Have you been to Scream Fest prior? No, I've never no. been. So what are your thoughts on the film Scream Fest selection? I haven't gotten the chance to see everything, but from what I have seen, everything looks really great, and I feel like we are among good company. I think definitely so. That's the longest and largest running horror film festival in the U.S., yeah. actually, um, and 21 years, which is incredible. Uh, you know, I think Rachel has a, a really good knack um, and a really great eye uh, for films that are going to kind of pave the way within the genre. Um, I know that in the past, you know, she's scheduled you know, Paranormal Activity and Trick or Treat and the list goes on. Um, so, yeah, you're definitely in good company um, with the selection for this film festival. So I have one question for you, which I've been asking everybody uh, that sat down today. Um, aside from Scream Fest, what's, what's your new to? Um, what's your favorite uh, Halloween tradition? Hmm, well, my best friend and I, even if we don't go out or do anything, we'll still dress up in costumes and take pictures of each other. So probably that. And then I do like to read uh, tarot cards. So I'll probably be doing some of that this month back to your angsty teenage years? Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Just asking, just asking the universe some questions, you know, with a candle. I hope they come back positive. I hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I have a Ouija board at home, but it's Ooh. like built into a coffee table under glass. It's kind of an art piece. I don't touch it. I don't think you're supposed to mess I with Ouija boards. I don't think boards. you're supposed to touch it at all. No. no. My fiance was like, I have this Ouija board and I want to put it in there. So I built her the table, but I'm like, that's yours, it's not mine. I think you always have to say goodbye, right? That's right, the Right, just important. put it on goodbye. Yeah. Like, glue it. <laughs> glue it glue down. It to goodbye. Nail it down. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sitting with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I really, really appreciate it. And thanks for joining us. Uh, stay tuned at Dread Central for more exclusive coverage from Screamfest. And for more information on Screamfest, you can visit the festival at screamfestla.com. Mm -hmm.